Hello VC. Uh, I did my first record purchases of the year, so let's get started with them. Uh, before I went uh, record shopping I already decided which would be my first uh, buy of the year and I did buy it. ACDC Rocko Bust. Uh, it's a quality ACDC album, what more do you need to know about it? And next one, Bob Dylan and the band, The Basement Tapes. The original Basement Tapes from 1975. Uh, this is uh, the last Bob Dylan album that I have uh, at least thought of buying. Uh, the future will tell <laughs> whether or not I will buy more Bob Dylan albums. But I left this one as the last one because uh, I really didn't have too high expectations for the quality of this one. Uh, but uh, actually it turned out to be better than what I expected, so yes, I'm uh, pleased with it. It's uh, not uh, among uh, Bob Dylan's best uh, recordings, uh, and uh, certainly not for the band. But there are good, good, uh, good stuff here anyway. Uh, next one was also a slight mistake. Molly Hatchet, Double Trouble Live. Uh, the problem was that uh, I had checked uh, from the internet uh, the releases, release year for this one and I made some kind of a mistake uh, because I thought that this would be would have been released in 1985 but it turns out that this was released in 1985 What did I say? 1981 I thought that this would have been released but this was released in 1985 uh, uh, By that time it seems that they had made some kind of a uh, change in their uh, style because there are a couple of songs here uh, Walk on the Side of the Angels and uh, Dreams I Never See I think they were uh, they have uh, they have a kind of awful uh, 80s synth sound on them so and they are kind of pop songs bad pop songs uh, so yeah those are kind of awkward they, they don't fit this album because the rest of the material is the, the like the their early material, and they are really good. Uh, especially side one here is excellent, absolutely, absolutely excellent. So, with the exception of those couple of songs, uh, this is a really, really good album. So, sad thing that they had included those, but well, that's that's the kind of things to go. Metallica, Death Magnetic. Uh, I've never heard this album before, but I actually have uh, high expectations for this one. I have heard uh, a few of the songs on the radio and I also saw them uh, live during this tour. So, uh, yeah, I have... I, I, I believe that this one will turn out to be a good one. Concrete Blonde, Bloodletting. Uh, American uh, Indio underground band. Uh, I usually don't uh, really like this kind of uh, stuff but this band is this is really really good album uh, a really good band I mean I have uh, uh, I have five albums from them and it's uh, it's all really good and apparently this one is a uh, collectible uh, even though th this was their only uh, hit album I don't know if it sold much or not but uh, at least some kind of a hit album and I found this for a reasonable price so yeah it's a good fine. Faith No More, live at Brixton Academy. Uh, I saw this uh, last year, but I didn't buy it because I thought that it was too expensive. Uh, it was only after I had come back home and I thought about it and I realized that the price would have been just the same as uh, any other second-hand album. Uh, but I, I'm, I'm guessing that the why I thought that it was too expensive was that uh, the other records that I was buying at that at that day from that record store were cheaper, so it made it seem like it as it, as if it would have been uh, expensive, but it wasn't. Um, well, anyway, now I found this for whole over was it one or two euros cheaper, so I <laughs> I did end up getting it cheaper, but uh, feeling like an idiot <laughs> all those months for for not buying this. Uh, I would say that. The, Saving two euros was not worth it. Hollywood Rose, The Roots of Guns N' Roses, featuring Axl Rose and Izzy Stradlin. Uh, 
uh, a five song demo they recorded uh, apparently in January 1984. Uh, this only includes uh, also includes uh, four remixes by Gilby Clark and four remixes by Fred Curry. Uh, those remixes don't add much to the original demos except that they do sound better uh, and uh, uh, better than those original demos but other than that they don't add much. There's uh, at least uh, one song includes a new guitar line so th there are differences there but uh, not anything uh, major. Uh, two of these songs, Anything Goes and uh, Reckless Life, uh, ended up on uh, Guns N' Roses albums. Uh, Anything Goes is very different except for the chorus. Uh, chorus is pre pretty much intact uh, only uh, here as it is on uh, Appetite for Destruction. But other than that the song is very different. Uh, Reckless Life is uh, pretty much intact already here, so it's very much the same, sim similar version than on uh, GNR Lies. Uh, I would say that the biggest reference to me on this one is the drummer. The drummer is mainly here just a, a timekeeper. He doesn't play anything uh, inventive, anything clever. Uh, he's just keeping time. So Steven Adler was a, a far better drummer. The Cure concert. Uh, I was going to pass this because this, uh, frankly, the album cover is so ugly. Uh, but I'm happy that I decided to buy this because uh, the songs here are far better than <laughs> this ugly cover su suggests. Uh, especially Hanging Garden and uh, 1015 Saturday Night uh, are excellent, excellent live versions. Billy Joel, The Nylon Curtain. Uh, I have uh, all the other Billy Joel albums on uh, vinyl except this one which I have on CD so I decided to get this one on vinyl also. And again Tom Petty and Heartbreakers, you're gonna get it. Uh, I also have this one on CD but uh, I found it for a very reasonable price so I just grabbed it. Uh, that's the second album. Uh, not the best one but very good one. I, I really haven't uh, come across a bad Tom Petty and Heartbreakers albums, although I didn't like Southern Accents, but uh, that, that had to do with the production on the album. I, I really didn't like the production on that one. Uh, then I also bought four CDs. Judas Priest, Angel of Retribution. Uh, uh, I have a vast majority of Judas Priest albums on CD, so I decided to buy this one on CD also which by today is a far more easier uh, option. Finding it on vinyl will be difficult, I, I suspect. Michael Monroe, Life Gets You Dirty. Uh, one of those things, uh, when these albums are released, you don't expect them ever to go out of print, which of course pretty much all the albums do, but you just don't think. So that's why many times albums just pass you by, and this was one of them. After one listen, I have to say, I'm very pleased with this one. Kauko Röyhkä, Etsijät, one of his uh, albums from early 2000, 2002 in fact. Uh, the biggest difference here was the guitar sound to what he usually uses. Uh, it was very raw sounding. Uh, but yeah, I, I did like this one also. Different but good. And like on Cosmonauts, the amazing colossal band, uh, the only like on Cosmonauts band, uh, like on a Cosmonauts uh, record that I didn't have. Uh, I heard this one when this was released, but uh, I didn't like this at the time. Now I decided to finally get this one, and I liked it far better than I did at the time. So yeah, I'm pleased to have this one. Now I'm missing the co compilation CD. So I'll probably get that one at some point. Okay, that's it for this time. Hope you liked it. Bye.